Howdy guys. Get back to work on the coop today. I bought this um, rotisserie off eBay. It's my, um, sort of like my, my own Christmas present in a way. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got to, it's, so I've got to set it up, put it on the coop, but I have problems with the, um, the Escort stiff. I took it into Newcastle Gearbox and Diff and dropped it off and ordered some gears off um, eBay from Dandelong, Victoria. And yeah, it took three weeks for him to get to Newcastle and then the Diff shop went on um, Christmas break. And I rang up yesterday because they've been open up for like four days. I rang them up and said, oh, how's the uh, Diff going? They said, St we still haven't got the gears. Then I looked on the Australia Post. I looked on the app. Straight Post app and it said that the diff gears are being delivered. So I rang up Straight Post and they said that they got sent to the address, the diff shop for three days and then the, the postie realised that no one had picked them up so they've taken them back to the post office. So I rang back to the diff shop and asked them, they said, nah man, we've been at the shop for like those whole three days and we haven't had the diff gears so it's been stuff up. So it's been like oh, four and a half weeks since I wore the gears. So now the shop, they had to go to post office and pick the gears up, which is something they shouldn't have to do. Uh, but yeah, they tried, they tried setting up the gears yesterday and had a go at it. And they reckon that the whoever originally cut the diff down, the ball going to diff for this car, they didn't do it properly because the the pinion gear, uh, the shim that goes behind it, it wasn't right to start with. So yeah, they got to stuff around and get it right, which it's completely possible. It's no, no major issue, it's a little bit more time, but this has got the very early Borg Warner diff. That's same, exactly the same as what this coupe had. So here's the diff out of coupe. It's perfectly fine, nothing wrong with it, but that's the early series. It's not as good as the later ones. So I'm gonna decide whether to use that again. I mean, I've already taken, I've taken the crown out of it. I used the shims out of that put in the Escort, but uh, it turns out the, the shims weren't that good anyway. But it's so easy, you can just get a, a Borg Warner diff out of like an EL Falcon EB or a Commodore or whatever. I can actually cut the diff down to how I like, you know, I've been like three centimeters or whatever, and then I can get deeper dish wheels if I want. So I'm undecided what to do with that. I know the easiest option would be just to use this again, um, but it hasn't even got an LSD center in, obviously, so I could, I could get set up. I guess I'm going to put an LSD um, carrier in it, which isn't a big issue. But then it's still running the drum brakes anyway, which isn't really that good. Because I know that when you have to stop in a hurry, the drums aren't always the best. They can lock up and shit. I've had it happen in the past. I've almost had accidents when I had drum brakes in the back of the Escort. But that's something I can worry about later. But for now, for now, this, um, this Escort taking up valuable room, especially over this side. Um, but yeah, I'll just have to work around it for now. I should hopefully have the diff next week. Put that back in the car. And then it should be sweet. Start driving it again. Now that's registered. Yeah, for now, get this rotisserie under this car. The, uh, the boot's going to want to come open because I haven't got the, um, the lock on it. So yeah, I've done all up around here now. I actually got stuck into it Christmas Eve and Christmas Day because we had our family get together. Um, was on Boxing Day, so I thought my son was at his mum's house, so I figured I might as well just get stuck into this. So I got heaps done. I welded all up, all up around the boot seal area. I welded up all up around the back window or top of these quarters done so yeah she's solid now i just got to weld in before i put it in rotisserie i have to put put these suckers in put them in they're supposed to go somewhere around here look at it uh put them in and then yeah she can go on the rotisserie but the guards the guards and the bonnet i might have to pull them off i can keep them on the car it doesn't matter but the problem i'm having like the weather we're having lately, it's been sort of, it's been raining and then it's stopped. Well, today it's been raining all morning. 
on and off yesterday, so yeah, the humidity level's pretty high. So I've got a, uh, I've got a weather station in the house. I'll look at the weather and see what the humidity's like today and tomorrow, and I might just put some epoxy primer on these guards and the bonnet, and um, yeah, maybe the doors. See how I go, but yeah, I need to, I need to protect it. It's not rusting any worse. Like it's pretty straightforward. You just um, put rust converter on it. I see a bit of rust here and there, but this that's because of the guard sitting out in the weather and it started raining whilst I, I went into town, come back. And um, if I put the car in a rotisserie, I'll have that little bit more room around the front of the car because, yeah, it's a... They say these cars are as long as, like, you know, similar size to the, the newer Falcons, but I think they're more boxy. So I've had my FG in here, Falcon, and it's, like, it doesn't take a nearest much room. But, um, yeah, so I'll get this registry out, unbox it, see what I have to do. Hopefully have some easy instructions. Got it all out of the box. Looks pretty straightforward. Really nice wheels on it. That'll be great for when I want to um, wheel the car outside and I have to push that little lip here down into the garage. So yeah, um, so far so good. Dash 8 fabrication. Never heard of it before. But um, yeah, so far so good. Looking over the, the basic um, manual air and it's pretty straightforward. It's take me time, I reckon. Probably take me a solid hour to put together, I reckon. Maybe a couple, see how I go. Put it together now. The weather's holding up all right. Got sunny there for a while now. It looks like it's gonna rain again, but it's all right. Um, so yeah, what I've done now, I've looked at um, how it goes to everyone. You've got these arms here. These, give you a quick rundown. These come off. These things hang off there. They go on there like so. And so they come off, connect it up to wherever you've got it on the car, but they'd be good on the front. I think there's a, I haven't really looked at the front properly, but I'm pretty sure they'll go on the front, all right, but on the back, yeah, it's a problem. So yeah, it won't work. I mean, you could make an uh, attachment that goes in the end of it, but then it's gonna make this whole contraption, whole rotisserie heaps longer, and as it is, it barely fits. I've got a shelf over there against the wall, so with the Escort in here, it's pretty hard to really move it around much, but so what I've done, I'll, I'll leave these the way they are for the front, and on the back, I've chopped, I've lobbed the heads, hen, the uh, tops off. I'm gonna butt up. I've ran out of flat bar plate, so I found um, what's left of a, a tow hitch out of a car. And um, so yeah, I'll weld that on there, and then that'll um, go straight onto the, the back of the car. So I've set up my drill press. So I've just gotta drill in there. Once I got the holes in there, weld that onto that arm, then I managed to find these bolts that I had, I think they were for a engine stand or something, I don't know why I didn't use them, but yeah, I've got them left over, it just works out perfectly, I've got enough to for the back of the car here, so I'll, I'll hook them up, that'll be good, um, then I'll do the front, and then I'll have to take, yeah, the guards are bonnet off, and uh, that's the weather doesn't look too good for epoxy, so I'll, I'll put them, um, I've got a spare room in my house, so I'll just, I'll put the guards and the doors, I mean the guards, the bonnet in there, um, then I'll, yeah, hook this up at the front, and yeah, I still haven't welded on these little suckers here yet, I've got to weld them on, I don't want to go putting too much stress on the back of the car without having them on, I've got to, under, under these areas have to be done too, but I'll do that when it's on the rotisserie, that I could kick the car up to the side a bit, then I can get under there and Finish them off. I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time. Got these Milwaukee kid here. Buddy drills are unreal, man. These last me for ages. 
Um, I think some of the, the six millimeter ones start to get a little bit blunt, but I'll use that a lot. Got the rotisserie on the car now. The only drum I had, these aren't really long enough to go to full length, so I've only got one grub screw in. So yeah, it should be all right, but it's not ideal. Such a big car, eh? So, the front was actually, I thought it was gonna be a lot easier, but it wasn't, never is anything. <laughs> Becomes this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, that in a lot of world, especially behind it. And um, yeah, I've got that on both sides. I don't know how I'm gonna go. The car has to come in at another foot, so I'm gonna have to clean out all this stuff along here. And uh, yeah. Now I've got it ready to, to lift up. I'll go up and I'll, um, I'll move that trolley out from underneath once I get up pretty high. But what I'll do now, I'll just go have a beer and chill out and just look over what I've done and take it easy. I'll have to put a, I'll have to put a snatch strap or tie down between these two doors to keep them together so they don't go flying open when I go to tilt the current side. But um, I like, I wanted to have the front of the rotisserie forward further, but I worked out if I had it too far forward, I wouldn't be able to get the bonnet on. So it's at the point now where the bonnet should miss it by about probably inch and a half or whatever. And I'll keep an eye on that, but most of the work on the car I won't have the bonnet on there, but um, when it comes to like doing body alignment and all that sort of stuff, I might have the car sort of on its side and I might need to have the bonnet on there just for aligning the panels and stuff. So. Now it starts raining. Gotta clean up. I've just started one step of tilting it on its side. I put a Z-Tech engine head bolt through there just in case for some weird reason this thing manages to slide. But it shouldn't anyway, but yeah, it's on a pretty good angle now, but I just remembered the guard on the front it's not really fixed on properly, so I'll just, um, yeah, I'll, I'll secure it from underneath and put something else on top here and should be right then, but yeah, it's on a pretty good angle now, but I have to be really careful because um, in the past, when I was restoring the Escort the last oh, three years ago, whatever, I, um, I used an engine stand for the one side of the car, then the other end I, I used like a, it's got a bit of old galvanized pipe and I made up a contraption to to um yeah like a rotisserie setup but it worked all right but um it wasn't perfectly central so yeah it could easily sort of get out of shape if you weren't careful but it's all right there's a much lighter car than this but yeah one stage I didn't like I'm doing now I didn't have the car high enough and I tilt the car on the side and then uh, one of the um recorders hit the leg and put a dent in it I had to knock it out pain in the butt but yeah I don't want to do that again but Looking at it from this point, it looks like it'd come pretty close, but I'll just have to take it easy. But the best thing about this, it's um, it balances really well, so it doesn't even feel like you're fighting anything. But if I spend an extra $220 on top of this, I could have got um, I could have got it with a, a like a, a gear set up in here, so you just wind the handle, which would be a lot better because yeah, when you're by yourself and you're tilting this, if it gets out of shape like if it's out of balance, which it isn't, and then um, it gets out of shape, then you can't stop it, yeah, it's not gonna be good, so. But I think it's all right. I'll just use this thing here. Muck around a bit, but it's pretty good. So far, so good, but yeah, it's something I've gotta be nervous about because I've spent a lot of money on this car and a lot of time in it, so i make sure it's, it's all right. But I put a, put a tie down strap across there door set fly open. Yeah, I've got these um, wheels from Bunnings. 120 bucks for um, eight of them. But they're really good. It's so easy to move the car around. Like, you only have to just push on it. And it just rolls around real easy I just use the pin in the front to stop it from spinning any further 
But um, there's a lot of battle damage, like where I've used jacks over the years. The back one's a bit rough. It's one of Dad's old windmill turbine bloody stands. I had to use a stick weller because the MIG weller needs repairs done on it. But it's really good. You can get inside it. I can clean all the floor up. Get in behind the dash and get up and clean in the roof here with all the rust is. Yeah, it's heaps rough, eh? It still needs heaps of work. I can even do the roof here, do all the sanding on it. It should be nice and easy. But yeah, very good, very nice. Looking at, a, at the car from a different perspective now. Wow. I really get to see where I've, what I've missed. It's really nerve wracking actually doing this, like, because it's such a big car and I've put so much money and time into it. So um, you can see where it's a cut across here, where I've replaced the right hand chassis. See the walls along here, along here. So yeah, you can see the, um, basically this whole area, this whole chassis across here is that of sedan. And then this whole floor section across here, that comes out of sedan. But I kept this part of the chassis rail because um, the one that was out of sedan was all belted up like the Caribbean Rally. Um, but yeah, all the, uh, the passenger side's original. And um, you can see here, like, there's another good reason why it's such a good idea to have a rotisserie. I can knock that out now. That's going to be a big job. This car is, I'm pretty sure it's, um, at some point it's been rallied. People playing in it and all the underbody damage, but. So yeah, I, I couldn't do this before. The car just sim simply did not have the strength in it to put on rotisserie. So yeah, now this is, um, Give me the opportunity to really get in there and clean all these welds up and put more welds in and just clean everything up like take all the paint off that correct that i've got a whole floor pan to put in here so i'll be able to cut that out from the inside and put a new floor pan in it's another job finish welding the list up and you can see this other Looks like rally damage. So this part here, what's left of it, it's not really hanging on by much. I'll have to take that off, get a new one, and then um, yeah, belt that up a bit and correct it, get it straight. But yeah, it's um, definitely worthwhile getting the rotisserie. You can see up here, it hasn't even been joined properly. Get onto that. Wasn't any point anyway because I've got a new floor pending on there. I said I think that's why I didn't replace it. Why I didn't weld it up. So yeah. It's actually um I'm going to be the room in the shed now because the car is on its side. I've got this um old trolley that I made. That that's that's done its purpose really well. So what I'll do with this, I'll get what's left of this box for the rotisserie and I'll, I'll make a little bench on it that way I can sort of can store store stuff on it and then the day I can just wheel it in and put it underneath and put it in here but this escort it needs to be over further so there's not enough room if, it was over, if the escort was over here more it'd be heaps better taking a chance and flip the car upside down it's all good to do this, like nothing's bad's gonna happen, but um, you can't see anything under the car, but what it is really good for is, well, fixing up all this areas, welding that up, getting it nice. 
And over here, finishing all that off. But, um, a lot of clunking and carrying on. This thing here was belting around. Because I, I couldn't get the grub screws in here. I was going to make a bit of a racket. And this guard here, it's not a not much there because I rusted out so I couldn't, couldn't attach it properly but it won't fall off. But yeah, certainly is a test of the um, the strength of all the joints and stuff. And if this car was to fall, it'd be an absolute nightmare because that roof would get fully caved in. But um I've achieved what I want to achieve now so I'll flip it back over. You can see all this here where I've done that up. Gaps there is pretty good. I weld all this up properly. That's where the, uh, the floor pans, not, oh, there's the inner and outer sill, but I can really go over it now. Oh, Cleco's sitting there by itself. Yeah, so I'll flip it back over now and, and I'll wrap it up for the day. Just tinkering around and just playing around with the settings on this rotisserie, and I decided to lower the car, lower the car as much as I can. Um, that way, you know, get an idea of it's how low I can go and what I can do with it. Because ultimately, when it comes to working on this, you want to have it in as many positions as you can. So you look at it here when I'm doing the body work, puts you in a good position to look at the body line and. Yeah, totally worth its money, this rotisserie. So yeah, look at it from that point. Um, and look at the settings I've got. So yeah, I'm so glad I spent a decent coin and bought a, boat, uh, a, a decent rotisserie because you see it's got the hole here where you can store the lever arm for the uh, strut. And then I've got this bar here. Which I found, it's good, it's okay, but I found that you're better off just grabbing the car itself and because you're going to get better leverage. But um, the car doesn't want to get out of shape. I noticed when I dropped this down, I dropped it down as much as I could and yeah, now the car's a little bit harder to, to get up. So I think that's really good for getting the, getting the balance right. So yeah, it's a good little hole here, I can put that away. And the other side looks a little bit different. Yeah, I don't know, it seems, oh yeah, over here looks different. It's more holes. I'll put a link in the description. Maybe there's other people out there who might mind um, getting a rotisserie for their, the cars that they're restoring. But the dude I bought this car off, he's, um, He's had many of these coupes and he reckons he helped design one of these rotisseries. I don't know if it's this one or another one, but he recommended this one. Took his word for it. He's been doing this sort of stuff longer than me, but I've also got these, these things here I can put in. Haven't been tested them out, but yeah, they basically slot in there. Put a grub screw in it. Yeah, it just gives that little bit more sturdiness. I don't think I'll worry about it. Doesn't, I don't think I'll. I've tested this car, I flipped over on its side, but I suppose if I'm, if I'm doing a lot of grinding and pushing the car around, working on it, then it might be the go, but I've had to make heaps of room. Down the front here. But it still managed to fit, I can't get any more forward, but yeah, it clears. I mean, this this is just standard double garage. So yeah, looks good. So what I'll do now, I'll just, yeah, wrap it up for the day and I'll get this little table thing and I'll slide it under the car. That's why I kinked the current angle much as I could so I can put this away. But I found thinking about when I get the diff back of the Escort, um, get this car out, put it in my other shed, and then I'll, I'll put a sail across here. Uh, that way I can put my FG Falcon in here, then I can get 
I could put this car lengthways across here. That way I can yeah, have a decent work area. Because um, if you have it, you have the car set up as it is, jack it up, get it the way you like it. You could walk away from the job and you can get back to it. You don't have to worry about setting it up, moving stuff around. So, yeah, in that way I can yeah, get more done every time I work on it. And um, I think the next challenge, um, I'll do that. I'll do all underneath it, just do all the repairs and that, but I'll put that skin in, patch the side floor, just go through and dress the welds back and weld in different areas, get it strong. But yeah, once I do that, I can, I can get onto these doors, put new skins across the bottom, fix the bottom up down here. And yeah, pretty good. That's what I'll do now. I'll wrap all this up so all this rain and moisture in here, it doesn't rust any worse than what it is. 